Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Wednesday afternoon, December 23rd. We are looking at the SPY ETF's market profile here on Window Trader. Um, first off, I'm hoping this video uplo uh, uploads correctly. I had trouble this morning, so I hope it does. Number two, there will be no videos tomorrow. I will not be here. So have a very happy and safe Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. I'll be back on Monday with a video Monday morning. Um, so enjoy yourselves. Good luck trading tomorrow. M period does what M period does today. I would take it with a grain of salt. I had a very good day on small trades today, and I'll go over them. Um, and why I explained something to the room, which is very important, which I want to go over here. I think we have to take M period, though, uh, in stride. All this was was week longs and shorts piling on. We have a pock all the way up in G's low, which is about $2 higher from where we're trading right now. That couldn't get lowered. Um, we ended up taking out the pock that was an upside destination coming into today that became a downside destination. We took it out right as the day closed in M period. First, let's start with the Russell. Russell hits an all-time high again. Just misses 200. I think he got up to 199.65. They have a price probe they go out with as they took out M uh, L's uh, the day's high. I'm sorry, the day's high, but also had a reversal bar. But it is a price probe. We'll see if that's accepted tomorrow. Triple Q's inside day today. So again, now we'll see how much you get out of it tomorrow. But they had an inside day, and they go out with a price probe like us in the spy and ES to the downside inside day. Now. Again, the composite hit another all-time high today in the NASDAQ. Triple Qs have not. They were about $2 off it from the high, and now they're about $4 off of it. So that's pretty interesting how they've kind of disengaged. They usually um, hit it in stride. So at some point, I expect the Triple Qs to go get their all-time high. Now, as for us, as you can see, they're continuing to push down because what is this? Just mindless machines pushing this market down. Plain and simple. We had an inside day today that opened on an open and drive up. We never saw it again until when? Well, M period. Now they tried in B and they actually tried in C but never got it. And then we just finally started one time framing up in C period. Now as far as my trades today, I took a couple of longs in A period. Twice I took longs when we were holding the opening and holding the inside day up. Came back in. I took. I went long the 360. Um, I didn't write. It. Yes, I did write it down. The 367 calls went up. Took it off. Came back in. Did that twice. I did nothing in B. In fact, I was almost ready to take a short in B if we took out the low today to see if we at least gets a little bit of a push. Never happened. The next trade I took was D. So B one uh, was inside. C was inside. D took out C's high. I didn't get it right away, but when it came back in, I got it. A bit wasn't anything special. Again, the 367 calls, and I did okay on it. Now, my last trade of the day lasted one, two, a good two and a half hours. So here is why I'm trying to explain the huge difference, and I mean huge difference, between one time framing up and a trend day. A lot of people, after D took out C's high, would call this a trend day. D was going, right? D one time framed up. E was inside. That's still one time framing up. F, G, H, I. Yes, it's one time framing up. But like I continually told the room, and we had higher value, what are the buyers getting for their efforts? I said, as long as there are no single prints that hold, which is a true trend day, I don't mind shorting each new high if it keeps coming in. Now, both sides could make money that way. If you were... If you were buying the high of each time frame, well, then you were probably getting stopped out a lot. But on every pullback, if you got long, you did well, just like the same on the shorts. And I said I had a very visual area from the 18th. Remember how erratic M was on the 18th? If that didn't happen, I would have used G as an afternoon rally high and B as the highest accepted price. I said, I'm still going to use that as a visual tool. Guess where we got up to today? Right there. So the way M was erratic on the 18th, and look, we opened below it, and look what happened on the 21st. Same thing. I'm not putting too much weight into what happened in M. So what did I do today? I took a short in G. I, I did the 371 puts that expired tomorrow. And 
started with a, a, a 15 lot. It came in, took some off, went back up, put some on. I continued it. It was I called it the same trade because I never got fully flat. Same thing in H. Went up, put some on, came in, took some off. Same in I. Continued to do it. And then when J finally broke I, I didn't do anything initially. I still had some left. But when J went back up, I put them back on. And then J finally took out I's low again and started doing exactly what it did for me yesterday. And I took some off at A's high. I took some off at POC. And then I was looking for value low. I didn't get it. but And I took the rest off. Now, did I expect M to do this? Of course not. Of course not. You know, M does what it wants to do, right? And that's why everybody right now is in a feeding frenzy, all right? It's like one piece of meat being thrown into a tank full of sharks as they are attacking and attempting to short. Now, if they're taking it off as it comes in and they're getting paid, that's great. But for my money's worth, all this is is shorts below the opening piling in. Now, tomorrow is a short day. If you, if you open below here, well, then you might get them to continue down. No doubt about it. But again, all this is is shorting. All right. Destinations for tomorrow. Well, we went out with a price probe, so A's low. That's going to be very visual tomorrow. 368.25. If we can't get back above there, well, then that means their sell is still there. Then we have our 10 wide at 369.06. So if we open above A's low tomorrow, there's a good chance you will trade at that park. But look at this, the way they keep pushing down. Then we have today's high of 369.62. And you should have all the other upside destinations that I've given you. For today, on the downside, we have today's low. Now, these are far and wide apart. So if sellers do decide to try to push this further and take advantage of maybe um, a lack of traders tomorrow and a, lot of, a lack of uh, liquidity, look at your destinations on the downside. We have today's low right now of 367.39. Then we don't have anything to 366.03, which is here. And then we don't have anything to 362.03. Now, I'm not saying we're going down to 362.03 tomorrow. But what I am saying is you could certainly see at least a test of today's low and possibly the 20 seconds low. We are in a 16-day balance. All right, let's go over the charts. So since I'm not going to be here tomorrow and we won't be talking again till Monday, monthly right now, one time frame it up, two months. Again, I haven't changed a bad tick on the monthly or weekly. I'll do that when I get back on Sunday. As long as we stay above, I think the key level for me right now is 364.38. That's last month's high. We're in a 16-day balance. You'd like to stay above that because the bottom of our balance is that 362.03 level. If you get down to there, now you accept it back into the previous month's range. Weekly. Balance. Four-week balance. The all-time high is the high of it. 359.17 is the low of it. That's your four-week balance. And then daily. 16-day balance, right? Or is it 17 now? I wrote it down. 17. 17-day balance. Here it is. Now, the bottom of it is inside this other previous 14-day balance. So that's why I think for the bull sake, not only don't you want to test the bottom of the 17-day balance, you don't even want to test really that here, the 364.38 level, because if you start getting acceptance towards the bottom of this balance and inside this one, well, if this breaks, well, guess what? You're going to go in there, you're going to go test the bottom of the weekly balance, which is 359.17, and then you might even test the 50-day moving average, which is at 355.34, right? Balance at some point leads to imbalance. It's a market waiting for more market-generated information. For my money's worth, as of right now, all M was was a flush of weak longs and shorts pushing down. We'll see if they get a continuation tomorrow and, more importantly, on Monday. Hope you had a good day trading. Have a great night. Merry Christmas. Happy, safe weekend all. And we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.